Well, good afternoon. It's great to be here in beautiful riding of Willowdale with our local champion, MPP Stan Cho. I just love the people of Willowdale. This community is home to some of the hardest working small business owners that I know in this city. At Korok Supermarket is a perfect example. This supermarket was founded in 1989 by Mina and Mo, who immigrated to Canada from Iran and is run by their son, Sam. And I know the supermarket is a staple for this great Iranian community here in the GTA. Our small business owners work their backs off day in and day out because they're building something of their own. Something they couldn't build anywhere else but here in this land of opportunity. And I'm also here today with our finance minister, Rod Phillips, our small business minister, Prabhmeet Sakaria, and the mayor of Toronto, John Tory. Mayor Tory has worked closely with us during this pandemic, and I thank you, Mayor, for all your support. And we all agree we need to rally around our small businesses right now. We know how difficult these past few months have been for our businesses, and we must continue to support them because they've always been there for us. Whether it's employing local students, sponsoring our kids' soccer team, or raising money for charity, they've been there for our communities. And we've been working hard to find the right balance between keeping our businesses open and keeping workers and customers safe. That's why we introduced the COVID-19 response framework. The framework is designed around early intervention, acting quickly when we start to see problems in a specific area because it's critical that we're spending sending, I should say, resources and acting as soon as possible. Through this early intervention, we hope to avoid large-scale lockdowns to ensure that public health measures are targeted, incremental and responsive to the limit of the spread of COVID-19. The framework is a baseline for the whole province, which also allows us to focus in on the areas which have been the hardest hit. We're working with Mayor Tory, Dr. Davila, and her team to help transition the City of Toronto into the new framework on November 14th. My friends, the reality is, as we've seen across the country and around the world, these numbers are going in the wrong direction. This virus is spreading at an alarming rate all over the world, and unfortunately, Ontario is no exception. We all need to be extremely vigilant right now. The situation is concerning and we need to remain on high alert. That is why we're working with Toronto and Peel Region to ensure that all necessary steps are taken as we move forward with our framework. The situation is changing rapidly, and we need to keep listening to our health experts. We need to take steps necessary to keep people safe, and we will. For businesses like Coark Supermarket, its laddered approach, public health measures will provide clarity and certainty on the status of their community and region. I also want to thank Korok Supermarkets and the thousands of businesses across the province who have taken extra steps to protect their workers and customers. In fact, I want to give a special shout out to all the independent grocers out there who have stayed open throughout this pandemic. You're not only essential, you've been real champions and thank you for all your hard work to keep the shelves stocked but we know many small businesses still need support. COVID-19 will be with us for a little while still. And that's why Minister Phillips introduced last week our 2020 Ontario budget, Ontario's action plan to protect, recover and support. This comprehensive action plan delivers over $4.8 billion to support our economic recovery and help small businesses get back on their feet. And more importantly, the plan includes billions of dollars injected directly into the health system to fight COVID-19. My friends, we are sparing no expense to support businesses and keep people safe. And I'm proud to announce today, our government is giving municipalities the flexibility to provide property tax relief to small businesses. We've heard from Mayor Tory and other mayors that they want more tools to provide targeted relief to small businesses and their communities. Mayor Tory, we heard you loud and clear and we're going to give you those tools. 
starting in 2021 will allow municipalities to provide a property tax reduction to their small businesses. And our government will consider matching those municipal reductions to further reduce taxes on our small businesses. Depending on the amount of municipal take up, this tool could provide small businesses with municipal and provincial property tax relief totaling $385 million by 2022. For instance, a bakery in Toronto, that could mean a total of up to $10,500 in property tax savings in 2021. It's absolutely incredible and it will make a huge difference. I'll ask Minister Phillips and Mayor Tory to speak more about these plans in a moment, but I want to call on the people of Ontario once more. Please shop local, order takeout from your favourite restaurant, pick up a hot meal from a store like this one, or stop by your local bakery to pick up some treats. As the holiday season approaches, please shop local, wear a mask, practice physical distancing and wash your hands. These simple steps will help people stay safe and keep businesses open. Those simple actions mean the world to our small businesses. And together, we can all make a huge difference. Thank you, and God bless the people of Ontario. Now I'll hand it over to Minister Phillips. Thank you, Premier, and good afternoon. It is great to be here in Willowdale with my colleagues, Premier Ford, Minister Sarkaria, and my parliamentary assistant and the great MP from Willowdale, Stan Cho. It's also just great to be here with Mayor Tory. Uh, he has been such a leader during this uh, pandemic, and we all appreciate the leadership, and, uh, and I appreciate his friendship. On Thursday, I introduced Ontario's 2020 budget, the next phase in our government's response to COVID-19. Ontario's action plan, protect, support, and recover. Our plan has three pillars. First, we are protecting people from this deadly virus by increasing our health investments to $15.2 billion. Second, we are building on our early relief to provide a total of $13.5 billion in direct support for families, workers and employers, in addition to $11.3 billion in cash flow support. And third, we are removing barriers to recovery and providing $4.8 billion to protect and create jobs now and in the future. This next phase of Ontario's action plan brings our total COVID-19 response to $45 billion. This includes important actions to remove taxes on jobs. Back in March, we more than doubled the employer health tax exemption to $1 million. We've heard from employers across Ontario that this measure helped them keep workers on the job during COVID-19. So we're proposing to make this exemption permanent. That means an additional 30,000 Ontario small and medium-sized employers will no longer pay this tax. But that is just a start. We've also heard time and again from municipalities and employers about unfair property taxes. Municipal leaders were some of the most compelling voices. We heard loud and clear that levelling the playing field and addressing unfair property tax rates was one of the most important things that we could do immediately to support employers now and in the future. In Ontario, there's a wide range of business education taxes across the province. This creates an unfair challenge for businesses operating in communities where rates are higher. So we are acting immediately to reduce these high rates by $450 million in 2021. In the City of Toronto, it means an industrial property will save $16.3 million in commercial pro and commercial properties will save $117 million. This will provide employers significant savings, especially when you consider it's money that their competitors in other parts of Ontario are not paying. Over 200,000 business properties, or 94% of the provincial total, are going to benefit starting January 1st. Property taxes are one of the most unavoidable costs that businesses face. Now, just to consider the impact of some of these changes, we'd like to talk about a typical bakery. The Premier talked on that. I'll go a little, into a little more detail. If the city decides to use the new tool, the new flexibility we've given them to offer a 30% discount, the owner would receive $5,000 in municipal tax relief. That would be matched by $4,000 from the province, so a $9,000 total. Combined with $1,500 from the business property tax reduction I just spoke about, this bakery owner, and it could be this bakery owner right here, would receive a total of $10,500 in property tax savings in 2021. Now, as any business owner will tell you, that could be the difference between being able to grow your business or closing up shop. This is help right now and for the future. Thank you very much. And now I'm going to turn the podium over to Minister Sarkari.
Good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to start first uh, by thanking Premier Ford for his leadership and his commitment to small businesses. He has provided a steady hand during one of the most difficult and most challenging periods in our province's history. As Ontario's Minister of Small Business, I can say without hesitation that small and main street businesses are an essential part of our communities and are vital to our economic recovery. These businesses sustain thriving communities, support supply chains, and connect regional economies. Many of them grow into the game-changing companies Ontario is known for worldwide. However, the past several months have not been kind to our small and main street businesses. They've been deeply impacted by COVID-19. Yet, these innovators have never stopped serving the people of Ontario. They have shown great determination, and our government is prepared to do the same. We will do whatever we can to help them survive this pandemic. We are working to ease their regulatory burden, cut their costs, and save them money so they can reinvest, grow their operations, and put more families to work. Our budget affirms Ontario's commitment to small business recovery, renewal, and growth. Together with the Main Street Recovery Act and our small business strategy, we are delivering a plan that will help more small businesses rehire staff, rebuild, and reemerge stronger than before. We are helping businesses go virtual with digital Main Street so they can still connect with customers when face-to-face -face isn't an option. And we are helping them stay open and stay safe by offering a grant of up to $1,000 for the cost of personal protective equipment. Applications for the $60 million Main Street Relief Grant will be accepted beginning on November 16, 2020. Eligible businesses, whether applying for the Main Street Relief Grant for PPE or for property tax or energy rebates in affected regions, will be able to apply for this funding through a new online portal using one application. We are making it as easy as possible for business owners. For more information and to find out if your business qualifies, please visit Ontario.ca slash small business. Our government's 2020 budget provides a roadmap to recovery and a clear plan to support small businesses during this pandemic. And it speaks to our commitment to never stop fighting for them. And now, I'd like to pass it over to the Mayor of Toronto, His Worship John Tory. Well, Premier and Minister and uh, members of uh, Provincial Parliament, uh, first of all, uh, thank you uh, for inviting me to be here with you today. And before I talk to the matter of the budget, I just want to say that this government of Ontario, led by Premier Ford, uh, Minister Phillips, uh, and others, th this government has been a good partner to the City of Toronto when it comes to dealing with the pandemic. Uh, we talk each and every day uh, back and forth. Uh, we've cooperated on just about everything that we've done. And I just want people to know that uh, in, in, in the country's biggest city, we have a government of Ontario that has been responsive and has listened and has worked well with us. And we've tried to do the same with them. And I think it's made a big difference in terms of our ability to support people uh, and to support uh, businesses. Now, I've had a chance to visit uh, this grocery store a number of times. And I know it's become a frequent destination of choice, not just for the Iranian community, but for the entire a surrounding community. They have things here that people don't have anywhere else. And one thing I know for sure, the Premier, Minister Phillips, myself, we are absolutely united in doing everything possible to help people and businesses during the ongoing pandemic. A lot of the challenges facing small business existed before. Uh, they had many challenges with many different things, but COVID-19 has really brought that home. It is hurting people and it is hurting businesses. We know that. And it is our job as governments to help them. Our number one priority right now for all of us, I think, is to stop the spread of the virus in our city and across the province. We need healthy people in order to have a healthy economy. But we also need a healthy economy to have truly healthy people, people who have the stability and the dignity of a job, the ability to provide for themselves and for their families. And so I'm here to say that the initiatives announced in the budget will help us to help businesses so that they can stay open and continue to be the backbone of our economy, not just so they can stay open, 
but so they can grow and thrive and employ more people and, and frankly make more money. There's nothing wrong with that because they reinvest that in making their business bigger and creating even more jobs. And so I'm very pleased to stand here with the Premier and with the Ministers to support businesses during these tough times and to support these measures that they have brought forward in their budget. By cutting the business education tax rates, the Government of Ontario is helping businesses save $133 million in Toronto alone. That's $133 million in Toronto alone. The tax rate is being reduced from 0.98% to 0.88%. That's a cut of about 10% for Toronto commercial properties, and that's significant. For some Toronto businesses, this measure alone, before we even get uh, to the uh, separate tax bracket, will mean savings of over $1,000. To put that into further perspective, I want to provide some examples of how this will impact businesses in various regions within the City of Toronto. For a Scarborough fruit and grocery store, for example, with a current value assessment of $988,000, this means $988 in annual savings, year after year. For a North York market, similar to this one that we're visiting here today with a CVA of $1.89 million, the savings will be $1,890 every year. And for an Etobicoke Food Mart with a CVA of $1.54 million, the savings will be $1,540 each and every year. And for downtown, where the property values are obviously higher, a CVA of $2.38 million will produce savings of $2,380 every single year. Now, thanks to the possibility also being created by this budget, a separate measure, this budget brought forward by Premier Ford and Minister Phillips and their government, our city will now begin to explore the creation of a small business taxation subclass, a separate bracket to help small businesses. Based on preliminary research, this tax subclass, a separate tax bracket for smaller companies, could save those small businesses thousands more. You heard the minister make reference to that in the form of lower property taxes, and this would be revenue neutral to the city thanks to the fact that the province is going to be contributing to this and thanks to the way the tax system works. So I want to thank the province for coming forward with these measures in the provincial budget. I think the commitment of Premier Ford to small business is well known and these measures might well have been in this budget if we hadn't had a pandemic because they're necessary to see us grow more jobs for more people. But the fact is we need it more than ever because of the pandemic and these measures have been brought forward. They're going to make a big difference. We've worked well together throughout the pandemic because we know people want their governments cooperating at the best of times and especially during the tougher times like we're experiencing now. It is this kind of unified approach that led to the Safe Restart Agreement. It's something that I championed on behalf of Toronto and all cities, but that the Premier also championed. I can tell you I witnessed that myself. He championed it with his fellow Premiers, and the Deputy Prime Minister of this country and the Prime Minister championed it at the federal level. And that agreement is helping cities, including the City of Toronto, with financial shortfalls like transit revenue losses due to the pandemic. Together, these two governments helped Toronto and helped Torontonians avoid huge tax increases or massive service cuts at a time when people can't afford either. The work to help businesses and residents get through this pandemic and the pandemic itself is far from over, but I know that we are committed to working together alongside our residents and businesses to tackle this monumental challenge. So Premier, Minister, Ministers and members of Provincial Parliament, thank you for inviting me today and thank you for these measures which will help Toronto gain strength as Ontario and Canada's economic engine. I would now like to invite up uh, to the podium MPP Stan Cho. He is the local MPP, but he's one of those people that when I heard he was running for public office, and let alone when he got elected, I just said that's the kind of person we need in public life. He gets business, he gets his community, he's a hard worker, I see him all the time, and I'm very pleased to, uh, well, I'm not welcoming him to his own riding, but I am welcoming him up to this podium. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Good afternoon and welcome to Willowdale. I want to thank the Premier, uh, Minister Phillips, Minister Sarkaria and Mayor Tory for visiting my neighbourhood today to talk about critical measures to support our small businesses. You know, when my parents immigrated to Canada from South Korea in 1970, like many new Canadians, they got their start in a small business. Growing up in their little convenience store not far from here, I learned firsthand that running a business is hard, even at the best of times. In the past nine months, businesses have had to make incredible sacrifices to keep us safe. The measures discussed today represent thousands of dollars in much needed relief for businesses that make our main, main streets vibrant. Businesses like Korok Supermarket are the backbone of our economy. They create jobs, provide essential goods and services, and drive our economic growth. 
but they're also the beating heart of neighborhoods like Willowdale. Up and down Yonge Street, you'll find Persian grocers next to Chinese restaurants, Korean karaoke bars and Russian bakeries. It's truly the world in one neighborhood. So I look forward to continuing to work with Premier Ford and Minister Phillips in protecting our sm small businesses today while preparing for our economic recovery tomorrow. Thank you. We'll go to the phone line for questions. First question, please. Just right before we, we go to questions, I want to introduce Mina and Mo. Do you have a second? Come on up here. Mina, don't be shy. Thank you. These two folks came from Iran, true entrepreneurs, started in a small business. And folks, you want to see a great story, you have to come by Young Street here, Korok Supermarkets. And they have, as, as the mayor was saying, they have everything plus everything. So thank you for your entrepreneurship. Thank you for your leadership within your community. And I understand uh, your, Sam is, is uh, helping out. So Sam, your son, he's doing a great job. So thank you so much. There's Sammy. Anyways, thank, thank you. you. Appreciate your endless success. First okay. question, please. Right. Your first question comes from Travis Danraj with Global News. Please go ahead. Hi, Travis. Oh, hi there, Premier. Thanks for taking my question today. Uh, Premier, can you please provide the measures and indicators in the orange restrict zone of the province's framework? You know, when we put this together, we treated this as a, as a baseline, uh, Travis. And uh, I, I believe it's a, a strong, strong uh, framework. It gives communities, cities, towns uh, guidance of, of where they're at, no matter if you're in the red or the orange, so on and so forth. And it gives them a lot of guidance and, and also gives them some certainty as well. As much as we see this uh, as fluid as it has been and how quickly it, it moves, uh, at least they have a, a good idea. And within any jurisdiction, uh, the medical officer of health can add uh, additional protocols, guidelines, and uh, so on and so forth. But at least uh, we know where you're at uh, based on, on the numbers. So we, we feel it's uh, a very good framework and it provides a good baseline. And uh, it's all about early intervention, is seeing if we, 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 we see an issue, we, we jump in there. And we jump in there by making sure we have better contact tracing uh, we have to make sure that we have the hospital capacity within that that region. We have to make sure we continue the testing in that region. So that, that's what we're uh, focusing on right now. Follow up. So I, I didn't hear any specifics on the measures or indicators in your answer. And Premier, if you have trouble articulating the measures that you were briefed on repeatedly and the new system that you approved of, how do you expect regular Ontarians who are getting up every day to find out there's some new change to what has become a bit of a dog's breakfast when it comes to these restrictions to understand them? And do you think you are at risk of losing the public listening to your government since the messaging of late has been very confusing for people to digest? Well, I'm going to respectfully disagree uh, with you, Travis. I, I think this framework that we put together makes it clear, uh, gives people certainty puts a, again a baseline uh, together and uh, if, if you you know you, you get into the the numbers that's when people start getting confused when you're when you're all over uh, talking about numbers people want to understand are they able to open up the gym are they able to open up the restaurant and when they go to the restaurant when is the closing hour how many people can sit at the table do they need to show ID so I again I'll, I'll respectfully uh, I disagree next question your next question comes from Cynthia Mulligan with City News. Please go ahead. Hi, Cynthia. Hi, Prime Minister. Hello. Uh, Prime Minister, I'm sorry. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau just said, quote, I would hope no leader in our country is easing public health vigilance because they feel pressure not to shut down businesses or slow down our economy. Ontario keeps breaking record highs. The positivity rate has more than doubled in a month. And yet the government is easing restrictions. I know you say that it's up to individual medical offices of health to add to that, but you're still allowing easing of restrictions in hot zones despite these increasing numbers. Is the Prime Minister speaking to you, and do you need to change your strategy? Well, I don't know if he's speaking to me directly, and if he is, uh, I, I want to thank him for his ongoing support. But, um, 
you know, we need more support for businesses. That's what we need. We, we need more support, financial support, and I'd be more than happy to sit down and talk to the Prime Minister about uh, that support. Follow up. And we need, and then by the way, any federal money that comes, uh, even the prior commitments, we need to start getting that flowing because it, it's not flowing as, as quickly as we'd like. Follow up. And that's okay, on Brady, rent. You didn't answer my question relief. about whether or not you need to change this strategy. Uh, I want to point out schools to you. Since mid September, September 13th, as they started to open, cases among children 0 to 19 have gone up by 900 percent. Prior to that, they were about they were steady at about 20 cases a day. Has your government forgotten about schools? And could that not be a major contributor to community spread? I mean, bars and restaurants and indoor dining, gyms, they've been closed for a month, and yet the numbers have still steadily gone up. Yeah. Well, Cynthia, what we're seeing around the world, no matter if it's schools or, or numbers going up in, in community spread, uh, we see it across the country, we see it around the world, and I'm, I'm concerned. I'm, I'm really concerned, to be very frank with you. We're seeing the numbers uh, escalate over the last uh, few days, and, and we're, we're taking action. We're, we put $1.3 billion into contact tracing and testing. We put three, $300 million into backlog surgeries to catch up on the backlog surgeries. We put $450 million to expand uh, hospital beds and hire more nurses. Uh, there's not a penny we're, we're uh, you know, sparing to make sure that we, we support the communities. We're putting up pop-up testing centers as, as I visited it last Sunday with, with the mayor. Uh, it's all hands on deck. We, we're sparing no expense or no resor sparing no resources. Next question. Your next question comes from Colin DeMello with CTV News. Please go ahead. Hi, Colin. Hi there, Premier. Um, I'm trying to determine, so, so the color-coded system is the baseline. Um, how far can a local medical officer of health actually go? Do they have the authority to issue a full lockdown in their specific region, similar to the one you would issue in March? Well, they do have that authority, but we, we've never taken that approach. Mayor Tory, myself, other mayors in, in Peel, local public health, uh, officials, uh, they, they work with Dr. Williams on the health table. Uh, I know all the mayors in the region, we talk constantly, we collaborate. Uh, there, there's, there's no light between us and we're all trying to get through this, but I'll, I'll pass it over to the Mayor Tory. Thank you. I think we have a system uh, in this province and in this country that is more complex than it needs to be and perhaps when this pandemic is over we'll all have a chance to take a look at uh, how we can make it better. But the bottom line is this, these governments respect each other. Uh, we have been working with the province on some of the changes we will announce later this afternoon. But we have a common objective and that is to keep people healthy, to make sure that each municipality, Toronto is different than other cities, it's different than Brampton, it's different than Mississauga or Sudbury or Ottawa. Uh, it's a city that is denser, it is bigger. Um, it has, uh, it, and because it's bigger, it has more sort of densely populated sections to it, and the numbers are different. And so um, we're working respectfully with each other, cooperatively, and we will do the things we think have to be done in the best interest of the City of Toronto. And uh, we're doing that in full communication and full consultation with the Government of Ontario, who, as I've said earlier on, have been good partners through this pandemic, and I'm sure will continue to be. Follow up. Perfect. Thank you for the clarification. Um, Premier, just a follow-up for you. You know, there are many people, I guess, in this province who feel that the cure might be worse than the disease. I'm wondering where you stand on that statement. The, the cure is, I'm sorry, can you repeat that, Colin? That the cure, lockdowns, yep. economic restrictions, etc., etc., is worse than the disease itself. I, okay, There's that, a lot of people who yeah. say that, who feel that, who are feeling tired about this. Where do you stand on that specific statement, that the cure is worse than the disease? Well, you know, some, some people have that opinion. I, I can respect that. You know, I have to listen to the, the health experts that are on our health table, and I rely on health and science. That's number one. The economy is, is slightly behind that. Without our health and, and uh, the safety of the public, you don't have an economy. It goes hand in hand. Uh, we want to keep the economy going, but we have to do it uh, safely. That, that's really w what it comes down to. And um, we're going to continue making sure we, we give the supports to the businesses, we give the supports to the healthcare system, which we have, uh, to make sure we can get this done. Next question. Your next question comes from Lorenda Radikoff with CBC News. Please go ahead. Hi, Lorenda. 
Hi there, Premier. We're seeing that Manitoba is going to be moving into a lockdown. Is that something that you guys are talking about, possibly just for the GTA, seeing these numbers that are pretty out of control lately? Well, I, I can't rule out anything. I think we've showed before at the beginning of this pandemic, if it needs to be done, we'll do it based on the advice of our, our health professionals, our advice from the local uh, medical officers, and, and the advice from the local uh, mayor. And that, that's, that's who I listen to. We have to be collaborative, which we have from the beginning. Uh, it's just, it's, you know, you just can't be running off into the wilderness uh, making a decision by yourself. I'm a strong believer, which we have been from day one, is working together, working together with our health table and, again, the, the medical officers of health, 34 of them around the province, and the local mayors. It, it's absolutely critical. And then we make a decision to, to move forward. But to answer your question, uh, if the numbers get totally out of control, I, I won't hesitate to do what it takes to protect the health and safety of the people. Follow up. We're seeing that there are some problems with availability of the high dose flu vaccines for seniors from a couple of cities at least. What is the provincial picture in terms of availability and what should seniors be doing? So we've ordered over a million more uh, doses and uh, the, the uh, two doses too, um, the, the lower, uh, lower percentage dose and then the higher one. For seniors, I know 1.3 million seniors have taken their their flu shot so far, and uh, we have about 170,000 on reserve. And we're going to make sure that we exhaust everything, and then we'll pull out the 170,000, which is a mixture of uh, both levels of doses. And uh, we're asking for more more from the federal government. Last question. Your final question comes from Rob Ferguson with the Toronto Star. Please go ahead. Hi, Premier. Hi, um, Rob. I just wanted to ask, um, picking up on what a few others have asked, but we keep hit, hitting record numbers of cases all the time, not just on single day, but every day the seven-day average, uh, rolling average of cases is, is reaching a new high. Yeah. Um, are, are you at the point of throwing up your hands? Uh, modified mm -hmm. stage two doesn't seem to have worked enough. Uh, I know it's hard to gauge how, you know, exactly how much it might have worked. So what are your options at this point? We you know, we're going to get something from Toronto later today, I know, but um, are you perplexed by this as, as many of the people I talk to are, and, and what are you going to do about it? Well, first of all, Rob, I, I'd never give up, never, ever, ever give up, and the people of Ontario should never, ever give up. Uh, we will get through this, and, it, it, you know, am I concerned? 100% I'm concerned. This, these numbers keep me up at night, and and uh, we're, we're throwing everything we can at it, and it, you made a good point, Rob. Even after stage two, um, we still see the numbers uh, escalating. So we're going to look uh, and work together with the City of Toronto and Peel and do whatever it takes to get these numbers down. But yes, it is concerning. And it's well, concerning on both ends, uh, on the economy and on the health. Follow up? Um, when we do get something more from, from Toronto today, and if the mayor wants to weigh in on this, I'd be... I'd, I'd love to hear it, but um, will you um, make anything Toronto and Peel do, or any other municipality, will you make them enforceable through provincial rules or through city orders? Uh, because there's always been confusion as, as to how enforceable some of these things are. Well, I, I don't think we've ever hit that point that we're just loggerheads. We're working together, and, and uh, I've always supported uh, Mayor Tory, Dr. Devilla, and I know Dr. Williams has. And with the protocols they're bringing forward, I will continue to support them, as I will with uh, Peel as, as well. I'll pass it to uh, Mayor Tory. I will just say that without uh, getting into what we'll announce later on today, that what we're doing is building on the provincial framework. And uh, we're going to be building on that to make sure that we do for Toronto what we believe is necessary at this point in time in light of all the different indicators. And we're doing it in full consultation and collaboration with uh, the provincial government. Uh, we will have to lay out, as we will do in the coming days, an enforcement plan of our own with respect to the things that uh, we do, the initiatives we undertake. But we all have the same objective in mind here. Uh, nobody has all the answers to this. Uh, there's a lot of unknowns with this around the world. I mean, if this Ontario or Toronto were the only place in the world this was going on, I guess 
you know, we'd have real reason to be concerned about that. But we're actually doing relatively well. We've got to do better. And the whole idea of what we're doing in Toronto, building on the provincial framework, is to do better, to get these numbers down, to get people healthy, to keep them healthy, to keep businesses open and healthy as to the greatest extent we can, as soon as we can. And that's exactly what we're going to do. And enforcement will be a part of that. And uh, we'll, we'll see how things go. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, everyone.